Hello. Today's poem we're considering is Love and a Question by Robert Frost. Before we start, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, it would be greatly appreciated if you would. Thank you so much. I have the poem here, so let's start. A stranger came to the door at eve, and he spoke the bridegroom fair. He bore a green-white stick in his hand, and for all burden, care. He asked with the eyes more than the lips, for a shelter for the night. And he turned and looked at the road afar, without a window light. The bridegroom came forth into the porch, with let us look at the sky and question what of the night to be, stranger, you and I. The woodbine leaves littered the yard, the woodbine berries were blue. Autumn, yes, winter was in the wind. Stranger, I wish I knew. Within the bride, in the dusk alone, bent over the open fire. Her face rose red with the glowing coal and the thoughts of the heart's desire. The bridegroom looked at the weary road, yet saw but her within, and wished her heart in a case of gold and pinned with a silver pin. The bridegroom thought it little to give, a dole of bread, a purse, a heartfelt prayer for the poor of God or for the rich a curse. But whether or not a man was asked to mar the love of two by harbouring woe in the bridal house, the bridegroom wished he knew. This fine poem by Robert Frost was written in 1915 when he was establishing his reputation as a writer. It is deceptively complex and raises many philosophical questions. So let's start to unpack it. In the poem, a stranger approaches the home of newlyweds, likely on their honeymoon evening. Winter is approaching. It promises to be a cold night and the house is the only sanctuary for miles around. The bridegroom must decide whether or not to welcome the stranger into his house at the cost of ruining the cosy honeymoon evening the couple have planned. In the second stanza, the bridegroom stalls for time while he decides and skirts the subject by commenting on the weather's unpredictability. In stanza three, the bridegroom's attention fixes on his bride, tending the fire which stokes his desire as thoughts turn to an evening of intimacy and carnal pleasure. In the last stanza, we are told the bridegroom turned the stranger away because he did not want woe, grief under his roof to mar, spoil the evening the couple had planned. Although he gave the stranger bread and some money, purse, and said a prayer for his safety, the bridegroom doubts whether he did enough for him or did the right thing in turning him away. Although this seems a simple story, it raises many complex questions. We are in Robert Frost territory, a rural setting, a story narrated in the third person voice, where a minor incident raises deep philosophical questions. Frost does not give his characters names and provides only information essential for his study of human nature. Stanza 1 sets the scene. A stranger appears unexpectedly at the couple's door at Eve. Eve means evening but suggests the time before the bride and bridegroom consummate their marriage. It is an inconvenient time to arrive, yet the bridegroom's house is the only shelter 
for miles around. The stranger turned and looked at the road afar without a window light. Although the stranger doesn't explicitly ask for shelter, his eyes plead desperation. He asked with the eyes more than the lips for a shelter for the night. These lines also imply he is too proud or embarrassed to ask outright for help. The poet economically provides thumbnail sketches of the characters because what is done in the story is far more important. The bridegroom is fair. We also know the stranger carries nothing with him to protect him from the harsh environment outside. He carries only a green white stick, possibly implying he's old and perhaps has difficulty walking. And he seems burdened by life's worry, including where he will find shelter for the night and for all burden care. The poet positions us to sympathise with the stranger and ask what is the bridegroom going to do? How will he respond? The stranger may symbolise nature, the house, civilization. He represents the unexpected and unpredictable aspect of nature and life, which contrasts with the bridegroom's home, symbolising security. The green-white stick associates him with this force of nature, and may also be a phallic image representing fertility, as frost includes newlyweds. Green may suggest the couple's naivety and virginity. In the second stanza, the bridegroom greets the stranger on the porch. The porch symbolises hesitancy, the halfway point neither within the house but part of it. The porch reflects the bridegroom's uncertainty about whether to let the stranger stay. Instead, he buys time, delaying his response by discussing the weather. Let us look at the sky and question what of the night to be, stranger, you and I. The bridegroom's uncertainty is reflected in his inability to judge the weather. He is undecided whether to let the stranger stay. Stranger, I wish I knew. Yet the signs that it will be a bitter night are around him. Leaves litter the yard and winter was in the wind. So we may question the bridegroom's sincerity, but he's also in a dilemma. In stanza three, in contrast with the worsening weather, Frost presents an attractive, desirable scene of warmth and comfort. When the bridegroom turns and sees the enticing scene, especially his bride, full of desire for him, he reaches his decision and turns the stranger away. Bent over the open fire, her face rose red with the glowing coal and the thought of the heart's desire. Rose red symbolises beauty, passion and desire. The glowing coal represents warmth and contrasts with the cold night awaiting the stranger. The glowing coals represent the bridegroom and bride's desire and possibly a small scale hell because desire and temptation fuel the bridegroom's decision to turn the stranger away and wished her heart in a case of gold and pinned with a silver pin. Gold and silver represent how much he values his bride, how precious she is to him. It might also mean how precious this moment is to him. The moment is as precious as gold and silver because it is unique to them both. The stranger's intrusion would spoil the moment. At this point in the poem, the bridegroom understands the uncertainty and ephemerality of life. 
it is a revelatory moment for him. He realises that the depth of their love may never be as apparent as at this moment. He wishes he could preserve his bride's intense love and desire for him, as one might preserve it in a case of gold with a silver pin, so he can carry it always. So in this sense, the poem raises a carpe diem theme, that he should seize the day or harvest the moment. After this revelation, he can think only of her and their pleasure. The bridegroom looked at the weary road, yet saw but her within. In stanza four, we hear the bridegroom sent the stranger away with a dole of bread and some money, a purse. He also prayed for him and cursed the rich, for the rich a curse. The tone is ironic, for relative to the stranger, the bridegroom is rich, and therefore, unknowingly, he curses himself. Despite his decision, the bridegroom is left unsettled, and considers he gave him little by way of help. He frets whether he made the right decision. He only knows that he did not want the stranger to mar spoil their special moment of intimacy in the bridal house. The poem raises many important themes. Let's consider them. A significant theme is change and the uncertainty it brings. Typical of a frost poem, the weather likely symbolises more than a literal autumn night. Perhaps the bridegroom is studying the sky to divine his future, what will happen to him at this crossroads of his life. It is a time of immense change. He is newly married with new responsibilities. His changing life is mirrored in the changing seasons. It is an autumn night and winter is in the air. But like he cannot predict the harshness of the weather, he cannot predict his destiny. Stranger, I wish I knew. There is also the bridegroom's uncertainty whether he made the right decision in turning the stranger away. Perhaps one purpose of the poem is to show how life is as unpredictable as the weather, but change is as inevitable as the seasons. So perhaps the larger question here is what kind of life is in store for the bridegroom? The leaves that litter the yard symbolise change. The woodbine foreshadows change. Its berries, now mature and blue, will soon decay as the woodbine perishes in winter. Frost likely includes them as reminders that nothing stays the same. Even the newlyweds' passion and lovemaking will, in time, dissipate. The poem uses binary opposites to stress the character's contrasting situations. Nature versus civilization, family versus the outsider, change versus certainty. In stanza one, Frost indicates how different the fair bridegroom is to the stranger who is old, alone and down on his luck. Yet he is what the young man might become in an unpredictable future. Although it takes place in a realistic setting, the poem employs many of the conventions of a folk tale. It has a mystical quality, a mysterious stranger arriving unexpectedly and spoiling the couple's nuptials. The reference to a curse and wedding celebrations echo Coleridge's The Rime of the Ancient Mariner and is one more facet of this fine poem. The simple rhyming scheme complements a deceptively simple story. It has the characteristics of a folk song. Words like Eve and Forth sound archaic. 
the lack of a specific location or time other than the seasons lend it a timeless quality, fitting for a poem exploring universal themes. In fine frost tradition, the poem raises many philosophical questions. It asks us to consider what our duty to others is. At its centre, this is a love poem, the repetition of heart in stanza 3 and heartfelt in stanza 4 emphasises this and it is also a poem that considers the difference between love and desire. How far does the duty to love extend to those outside our immediate family and those closest to us? Should true love for others involve sacrifice? The fourth stanza mentions God and prayer and introduces a religious theme. The bridegroom might say a prayer and utter a curse, but both are words when the stranger needs someone to do him a good deed. Perhaps the right thing to do, the moral thing to do, would have been to give him a bed for the night, as it seems a little sacrifice for a comfortable man to give bread and some money. Frost leaves us to ponder. The poem asks us to consider what we would do in the same situation. Also the regret that plays on the man's mind long after the event asks us to consider how his life fared, particularly his relationship with his new wife. Like most fine poems, there is no neat solution. Uncertainty prevails with no resolution at the end. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you did, please hit the like button below. We also have other videos to check out on writing and textual analysis. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, it would be greatly appreciated if you would. Thank you so much. Until next time, from Carol and me, write well.